this is Madden 19. I'm the coach. You're locked into the NFL on EA Sports. Straight ahead, we've got a great one on tap between the Tennessee Titans and the Buffalo Bills. I'll be back with you again with scores around the league at halftime. But kickoff right around the corner. And standing by to call the action, here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Coach, we're just about four miles off the shore of Lake Erie at New Era Field in Orchard Park, New York. Nothing like the fanfare of introductions to an NFL game, and that was in evidence a moment ago. Fireworks, pyrotechnics, you name it, this crowd is ready as their guys get set to match up between the Tennessee Titans and the Buffalo Bills. Hello, everybody, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. And, Charles, you take a look at the Bills entering play here. The losers their last time out, so they'll look to make amends here. And one of the best ways you can do that is to be at home, and they are. They're going to try and ride that home crowd and that wave of emotion to a victory in this one. Meanwhile, for the visiting Titans, they too were losers last week, so they're also hoping to get back in the win column. Something's got to give in this. Let's get back into the action. The situation, ball in the red zone. It's second down, and the defense needing to step up. Mariota now on second down. And that one's going to be over everybody in the back of the end zone. It's incomplete. One of his main targets, Delaney Walker, the intended receiver. And that takes us from second to third down. interception thrown. And that last one, that hurts. forward for only about a yard up to the 21. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. Good coverage that time by Malcolm Butler. We talk all the time about playmakers on offense, but let's face it, there are plenty of playmakers on defense, too. I think we just saw an example of one, didn't we? Not force that incompletion. Yeah, he's a great corner. They got a couple of them on that side of the football. He's going to loft one deep. Oh, well, this is taken in. It's complete. It's a big play for the Bills on third down. 48 yards. They've got good playmakers on the offensive side of the ball. I don't know what happened last week to, to really hurt their performance and, and hold down their production, but... I would dare say that this week in practice, there's a lot of talk about how they're going to increase their proficiency. Yeah, that was a good start getting the playmakers involved. You mentioned that to me pregame. That's what they did there. Yeah, I think a lot of people think the coaching staff really gets on them, and that's how they motivate them. Most of these guys are self-motivated. They have a lot of pride in their performance. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. Holding offense. So some holding over on the left side of that old line. And I know for the guys trying to move those big defensive people, they'd love for them to stay in one spot. But they move around so quick and so fast that sometimes you just have to grab them. After the penalty, it's McCoy. There he goes inside the 30. And he's finally down at the 21-yard line. That burst good for 20 and a first down. And there we see an early burst that makes him one of the leading rushers in the league. Well, I want you to know, I listened to you yesterday when we were watching film. You said write down the word vision for him. It was on display there, wasn't it? It certainly was, because he allows the blocks to set up in front of him. And if that continues, it will be a long afternoon for those guys trying to play some defense. No, 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 no. Jack, Patriot! Patriot! 
And they'll keep it on the ground with McCoy. And yeah, not much to speak of there. Maybe a yard down to the 20. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. And what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. And they'll get him down right about the 20. Back-to-back one-yard runs here, so that leaves him with a third down and eight. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? Throwing his Allen on third. Now he's got his man. It's the tight end play. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Really been an ideal start for them. They get the turnover on the opening possession. Now here they are moving the ball straight down the field on their first drive. And that feels good, but you know on their side of the field, all they're thinking is finish this drive off because they took it away, right? So now you've got them back on their heels a little bit. Now go down, put a touchdown in. Look out. You've won the mental battle early in the game, and that may carry over for you. He'll get eight on the scramble there. It'll be second and a couple. I think the last two plays really illustrate how difficult it is to game plan against this guy because you know he can throw the football, but how about his use of legs as well? What we call those broken plays, you can't account for them. And he takes it in across the chalk for a Bills touchdown. LaShawn McCoy, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Bills have taken the early lead. And they're able to run it in. It started with a battle in the trenches. They won there, and they got in for six points. And that's going to be a tough one for the defense to deal with. They've got to go to the bench now and figure out how. On second down now, this defense sort of finding themselves with their backs against the wall. Ball in the red zone. Now a second down throw for Mariota. That is incomplete. That one didn't quite make it to the target, but that's not always a function of the strength of the arm of the quarterback, is it? Sometimes there's just too much pressure there. In any case, the ball doesn't arrive. An incomplete pass on second down leads us to third and inches. Now we've got movement up front. I think this is going to be on the Titans. False start, offense. So that'll back them up five. The Titans on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This will be third and five. From the shotgun, it's Mariota. Open man is Taylor, he's got it. And all the way down inside the five to the four. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Tried one for it with Henry. And he is going to lose yardage here. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft, and able to really make a big time play for their defense. He'll get it up the middle, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. Partner, you mind if I take off this headset and put on a coaching headset? You want to get this running game going? I want to get this running game going. I'm going down there and saying, gentlemen, we have got to run the football. We've got to get it going right now. Yeah, to this point in the second quarter, it has been a struggle. This will be caught at about the six. A four-yard pickup, not enough. Fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. So time becoming an issue here late in this first half of action as we get back down to the field. And now out come the Bills. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Did they stick with that? I 
would think that they would because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. And boy, that one drops incomplete. But if he was hit a fraction sooner, it may have been a fumble. Feels like they're getting caught in between here because they didn't completions on first and second down. Now you got to worry a little bit about the clock because you prefer not to give them another shot here in the first half. But if you don't pick up the first down, guess what? You're likely going to have to. 14 yards, and the Bills will get a new set of downs. First down, and they're going to throw with Allen. Polluting the pressure right. He's got a man. It's Corey Coleman. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. Another big hitter there. This one good for 18. Now a play fake here on first down. He's just going to dump this one off to his fullback out of the backfield. Call it a pickup of seven, and it'll be second down. And the big guy catches the ball out of the backfield, and oftentimes it's quite a surprise to guys playing defense because not ordinarily thought as a pass catcher, it often works when they decide to dial it up. Again, they'll throw with Allen. Going for the deep ball. And this is caught for a Bills touchdown. Corey Coleman, his first touchdown on the year. And the Bills will add on to their lead. And the defensive there, that was a battle. He just made a really nice play. A really nice play, making sure his body position was correct. And how about the throw? Zipped it in there. And it results in the touchdown. zone update. This defense stacked up here with a first and 10 inside the 15. Now Lewis. And despite the fancy footwork we saw, they'll get to him just inside the 15. Tackle made there by Matt Milano. I have to think a major focus of the halftime means had to be figuring out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what well, you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secure before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. And he'll be taken down here at about the 11. Just a couple there on the second down run. Now they're staring at a third and eight situation. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature and make sure you don't get hurt. To throw is Mariota. And into the end zone for a Tennessee touchdown. Deion Lewis, his sixth touchdown of the season. And the Titans are within a two-point conversion of tying this game. I wonder if he changed anything on his play sheet. A solid drive here has his offense in really good position. Can they finish the drive off? Let's find out. It's first and ten inside the Detroit! red zone. Detroit! They go play action here on first down. Rush coming, and he's taken down. So now 20 yards to go on second down after the sack. Work to be done. Here's Allen. Strong running by Clay. And this is caught at the 8. And finally, down he goes as they work it inside the 10 to the 7. Back now in Buffalo. All even as we get ready to start the fourth. A field goal could get him the lead, but it might not be enough here as they come up on first and goal. Now McCoy. 
So he got free of one tackle, but couldn't do a whole lot else. Only a yard that time, second and goal. Well, it's been the air game that's taken them down on this drive before they finally turned around and handed it off on the last play. And now they're looking for the big boys to get them in the end zone. Couldn't do it there. It'll be interesting to see. Offensive lines had to pass block a lot on this drive where they'll be able to revert and fire out and create some space in the run game. And give him two yards officially, and now it'll be third and goal. Well, Brandon, we always know that once you score one touchdown, you you're, two. <laughs> you're without a doubt. And so far today, he's got one that was denied as he tried to get the second one. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? The zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed it. This defense in need of a big stop in a tight game in the fourth quarter. Let's see if they can get that stop they need. All right, here we go. 3 19. On third down, Allen. It's caught. Jones. And they're able to work this to the 25 before it's all said and done. 24. First down. Oh, incomplete. A turnover would have really helped there. Almost intercepted. Instead, it's just second down. I think he's taking an awful chance with the football right there. You've got a lead. You've got to protect it. And he's taking chances, putting it out there in a little bit of jeopardy. Especially in a spot like this. Fourth quarter, as you said, trying to cling to that advantage. Yeah, that one probably should have been picked, huh? Well, they get six here after the incompletion, and it'll leave them with a third and four. To the air, Allen. And look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Picked off by Super Bowl 49 hero Malcolm Butler. Pass the 10 to the 11-yard line, and that's where the return stops. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. Some good games going on in the early window. This might be the best of the bunch. Back near his goal line, Mariota. And Walker has it. And he's taken down, but not before reaching the 20. 16 yards right off the bat and a first down. Time for a break. We're back to see what happens after this. So the Titans in possession of the football here as we get your reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. He'll look to throw. Sets up the screen to Lewis. And he's able to get up here to the 26. A nice little screen. They get six on first down. Titans moving quickly here. They're in the hurry up. He's back to throw. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Corey Davis, the intended receiver, and it's third and four. He's unable to complete it there, and just not the game that you would expect from him. He's been off the mark, really start to finish. Yeah, it makes you wonder what exactly is going on. Is he a little bit dinged up here? Or is it just a ball just by a bit? Maybe he can get it back in this situation. He'll need to. The Titans going to use the first of their timeouts as they stop it prior to what will be an important fourth down. Back to throw. And he hits his man, Matthews. They keep the game alive, at least for the moment, as it's a first down. First down now, but that clock rolling. Here's Mariota. Walker with a grab, left side. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Counting down toward a minute to go in this football game. Mariota. Flushed out right. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. 
Mariota had an 87-yard run as a rookie. This one a bit less, but it is a first down. They'll look to throw. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. Counting down at 30 seconds remaining. Back to throw. And Walker with it over the middle. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go in the football game. Mariota going to bring him up first and 10. And he's 5 for 6 now throwing the ball on this drive. Mariota. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. Jerry Hughes in there to drop him as the clock continues to roll. And they'll get the spike off with six seconds to go. And that winds up incomplete. And now only five ticks on the clock. And likely just one final go at this now. And the clock will now stop as a timeout is called with five seconds left. And the 13-year man puts it through. And they will tie this game here in the final seconds. First drive of overtime coming up. So this offense, they could end it if they can punch it into the end zone. A field goal, and the game will continue. First throw of overtime for Allen. This complete to the tight end play. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A good pick up there, a 22. I don't know whether I want to be a fly on the wall or not when they hear the explanation of how he, one of the bigger targets on the field, the tight end can be that wide open and uncovered downfield. Who blew that assignment? Somebody did. No doubt about it. There's no way you're not going to account for him. The tackle was by the Boston College product, Harold Landry. What's the old expression? Three yards in a cloud of dust? In this case, it's dust-covered pellets. It's no longer that old grass that we used to play on right and chew it up. Now, we get that artificial surface. You see the pellets go up. Still a nice play by the defense. That's going to be a six-yard gain. It leaves him with third down and just a yard to go. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. Now they run with a backup. It's Chris Ivory. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive going. That's quite a spot there for his first carry of the game, but obviously they had plenty of faith in him, didn't they? No question about it. And here, why not go with the fresh legs? Able to push forward, pick up that first. Now a first down carry here for McCoy. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle, that's what we saw right there. Yeah, and that's what their job is, and really a lot of pressure comes, and the Titans able to bring him down. Take Carradine in there to bury him for a loss of 11. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Oh, and it's intercepted. Picked by Kevin Byer. And the return this time will go out to the 42-yard line. And they can block in the back. Offense. So that one will be accepted. Mariota and the Titans break the huddle first and 10 at their own 16. From the gun, Mariota. And this one caught along the sideline, but they say already out of bounds. And the throw didn't give him a chance to turn it upfield, and that brings up second down. This being their second opportunity in overtime, third overall drive, see if they can settle into a rhythm. And that's what you're looking for. Get a few first downs, move the ball downfield, have some confidence, get yourself in a spot where you can at least kick the field goal to win it. But I tell you this, 
If I'm the play caller, I'm looking at that part of my sheet that says playmakers. Get the ball in their hands, critical situation, now's their time. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. Well, there wasn't much there with that hitch route. They didn't gain what they expected, but sometimes when you call a hitch, you really don't have an alternate to go to. You don't have a second route to throw it to, so sometimes you have to rifle in there and hope for the best. And this is going to be incomplete. The defense does its job. Now they're going to get the ball here in overtime with a chance to win it. Major League kudos to them because to get the ball back in this spot, everything was on them. It had to happen, and they pulled it off. They'll get it back to their offense with a chance to win. Well, he wasn't too far from breaking that. Officially, give him 15. The Bills offense now, they get set to head back onto the field. Neither team scored yet. Now we go to sudden death. Next points win this game. How about the tension right now? It is ratcheted up, isn't it? And he'll be hit from behind and taken down. Jarrell Casey in there to get him his second sack now of the afternoon. I know there'll be a little bit of criticism there because they went right back to the air after the huge pickup and end up getting sacked. That's more than the play that you make. You feel like you've got momentum on your side. Unfortunately, the O-line failed to hold up to try to keep that momentum going. So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. This give is to McCoy. Sheds off the tackle. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense. It'll be their second and final timeout, remember, here in overtime. We'll be back. And they'll keep on the ground with McCoy. They'll get this down inside the 10 for a pickup of about three. And that carry, probably not so much for yardage, just to get the spot that you want to kick the field goal. And any yardage you gain there is really kind of gravy. And this just becomes what my old coach used to say. Get into position to be in position. <laughs> and that's what they want, the right spot for their kicker to line up the field goal. And before this second down play, we'll get a whistle, a signal, and a timeout. They'll be down to just one remaining as we step aside here in overtime. And he got it! The kick is good in overtime. He's able to split the uprights. Well, we thought this game would be a good one. It did not disappoint into overtime, and it took the field goal to win it. And we always pay lip service to how important it is to play defense. And usually we focus on the big offensive pyrotechnics, right? But in this case, they got the ball back on defense, gave themselves a chance, and they capitalized on it with a victory. And I don't care what distance that field goal is from in overtime. The knees are always knocking, but he <laughs> pushed it through. Not only that, think about your snapper, your holder. A lot of nerves for them, too, because they have to do their job in order to give him one last chance to put a foot to it. So for the Bills... The win means he'll finish the first.
Shady! Throwing some shade. It's a coach. This is Madden 19 on EA Sports. Coming up, we'll see LaShawn McCoy coming up a big game a week ago as it'll be the Baltimore Ravens taking on the Buffalo Bills. I'll have scores around the league for you at the half, but it's time for a little football. So we'll hand it over to our broadcast team, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, coach, from the home of the Bills since 1973, there's a look at New Era Field just outside of Buffalo, New York. The scene a few moments ago, here it is. It's unlike any other in sport as both teams made their way out of the tunnel. These folks are fired up as their guys are ready to do battle between the Baltimore Ravens and the Buffalo Bills. Hello, everybody, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. And, Charles, you take a look at the Bills entering play here. They come in playing pretty good football. Winners of four of their last six games. Meanwhile, for the visiting Ravens, they're hitting their stride of late. Winners of three of their last four. test to check in on as we've got a third down situation looming. Third down. Flacco needs a decent chunk of yardage. Pressure and he's going to be taken down. They sack him back right around the 44. And they brought the pressure there just right up the gut, didn't they? Yeah, they certainly did. And, you know, when you've got so many different responsibilities as an offensive line, you got to deal with the nose tackle, the two defensive tackles or ends, and then sometimes you just can't account for everyone. The linebacker slipped free. The Bills' offense set to go now as they'll have it on this opening drive of the Detroit, ball game. Detroit! Now the first carry for LaShawn McCoy. And he'll go down right at the 30-yard line. The numbers last week for Shady McCoy. 16 carries, 75 yards, and a touchdown. I'm so glad you asked for a couple of offensive linemen to talk to before the game because they told us that in last week's contest, everything was clicking. Didn't matter whether they were doing gap scheme, zone scheme, power, whatever it was, it was working. And they expect more of the same in this game, although they're prepared for some adjustments by the defense they expect to see. Allen, left side here, caught by Clay. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 12 yards that time, and a Bills first down. <laughs> I got a kick out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations, but a guy of his size can't really hide it. But the tight end drag route, Definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down. A give to McCoy. And across midfield he goes into Raven territory. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. A nice run here early on. It doesn't take a great play call to realize you want to establish a guy of his caliber with runs like this early because they'll pay dividends as the game progresses. Signed by Benjamin. A very solid gain of 27. So the defense blitzed. A nice job picking that up, completing the pass. And how in sync was the quarterback in his center on that play? They saw the blitz, made the appropriate calls, got the line engaged because now they know there are going to be extra guys coming at the quarterback. So they got their assignments down back and kept them away from him. And he's able to step up in the pocket and fire one now for a really good strike. First down, Allen. Over the middle, the catch by Coleman. And he'll be brought down somewhat awkwardly here and a late flag as well. I think this one's going to be a face mask. Face mask. Defense. 
to give them the yardage on the pass and half the distance to the goal line. Automatic because they're down. inside the 30, so now you don't march off the full 15, right? You have half the distance to the goal. In any event, that's precious real estate given up. And now it's first and 10. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. No, 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 no. Check. Patriot! Patriot! They'll try and run it with McCoy. And he'll get in. Touchdown, Buffalo. LaShawn McCoy, his fifth touchdown now on the year. And the Bills have taken the early lead. I know we don't talk about it enough, but the intelligence level of the guys up front blocking, the offensive linemen, maybe the smartest guys in football overall. for the defense coming up. What can they dial up here to try and thwart this third down situation? Third down, Flacco from the gun. And pressure gets to him again. Jerry Hughes in there to drop him for his fifth sack of the year. Coming up here, this defense looking for a third down stop in the second quarter. From the gun, Flacco, and that is incomplete. Let's face it, perfection is something we... Time to get back into the action. We've got a red zone alert. First and 10 at the 14. Time to get back into the action. We've got a red zone alert. First and 10 at the 14. Throwing on first down is Allen. He'll set up the screen to McCoy. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. The first down screen pass, good for five. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass, looked like it was coming together, looked like there was an opening. Still, ended up with a solid game. Here we go, 319, 319. Now Allen throwing on second down. This will be caught at about the five. And he is into the end zone for a Buffalo touchdown. Corey Coleman. His second touchdown on the season. And the Bills will extend their lead. That score was not a game clincher by any stretch of the imagination. But the other team now has to be careful to not let this game begin to slip away. A big play coming up for this defensive unit. They're down, but just by a bit on the scoreboard. Can they get this third down stop in the third quarter? Now let's go! Boo, Blue They'll try and run for it with McCoy. And he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough. kind of getting to be desperation time here for this defensive side. They need to get the ball back to their offense. They have a chance to do that on third down. Allen going to try and throw on third down. Forced out to his left. He's got a man complete. It's Clay. And he's able to get the first before... fourth quarter and it's kind of getting to be desperation time here for this defensive side they need to get the ball back to their offense they have a chance to do that on third down <laughs> Allen from the gun on third down this first running back McCoy and inside the 20 before he's brought down 12 yards that time and a Bills first down when you have some They go now to McCoy. He's seen a ton of action this afternoon. And he'll take this into the end zone. Now hold on 
spot here. We do have a flag down. So let's see what this is about. And they block in the back. Offense. So erase the red zone score. They'll have to dial that one up again. And you know how difficult it is to strike in the red zone because things are a little bit more condensed. You gotta go back to their play chart and see if they can dial up another one. Now a play fake here on first down. His throw caught at about the five. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. The Mills passing game getting them down the field. They've got another first down. A good chance now to put this game on ice. This is first and goal. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he's going to get this back to the three-yard line and no further. They'll say no gain on the play, and it'll be second and goal. This is where coaches have to have spent a lot of time going over situations with their players because him getting tackled there is not the worst thing in the world. You're going to run more plays, right? The clock's going to go. But his thought process is getting into the end zone. It's counterintuitive for him to actually go down in this spot. Yeah, but you, like you say, you don't want to get in the end zone too early here. No, not at all, because you may leave an opening that could come back and get you. Well, they've been so good on third down all day long. Can they convert another here on third and goal? Hey, hey, Allen now looks to throw. Escaping the pressure right. And that is caught. Touchdown, Buffalo. Kelvin Benjamin, his ninth touchdown of the season. And the Bills will add on to their lead. They were still throwing with a comfortable lead here late, and now that lead even more comfortable. And your first thought is, is there bad blood that went into this one ahead of time that maybe they're seeking some revenge or they just don't like them? But the other thing that always hits me is, are they... Nothing to lose now. This offense forced to go for it down a bunch here in the fourth quarter. Here we go. Fourth down, fourth quarter. Flacco. And he's going to be taken down. Pressure gets there back at the 39-yard line. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And that'll be just about all she wrote for this one. So they tried to... And Charles, I think when the schedule comes out, all teams, no matter where they're predicted to finish, talk about protecting your home turf. They were able to do that here in this one. Similar to a tennis match, right? Not letting them break your serve. That way you hold on to it. They got it done, and they feel very good about that victory. So for Buffalo, the win will help them keep pace in the playoff race as they move to 6-3 and three on the year. And they'll be able to enjoy this one through the bye week before they get back at it again. Meanwhile, for the Ravens, they drop back to 500 now at 4 up and 4 down. And they'll be back home next week as they're set to take on the Cincinnati Bengals. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter.
Hey, everybody, it's the coach, and this is Monday Night Football on EA Sports. On tap is what should be a pretty good matchup between the New York Jets and the Buffalo Bills. I'll be back at halftime to look at some of these stats and scores from Sunday's action. But for now, it's Monday Night Football. And to call the action, here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Okay, Coach, they indeed love their football here in upstate New York as you look inside of New Era Field in Orchard Park. Nothing like the fanfare of introductions to an NFL game, and that was in evidence a moment ago. Fireworks, pyrotechnics, you name it. This crowd is ready as their guys get set to match up between the New York Jets and the Buffalo Bills. Hello, everybody, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. And, Charles, you take a look at the Bills entering play here. They come in playing pretty well, 6-3 and three in their last nine games. Meanwhile, for the visiting Jets, they come into this one fresh off a victory that finally snapped a six-game losing streak. And there's nothing like that win that makes it... situation forthcoming let's get into the action here we go now Bam! throwing here on third down Darnold throwing the out route incomplete that's Rodgers and he's got this down to the 35 give him 10 yards there Tough spot here for the defense. Let's see if they can step up. We drop in on a first down in the red zone. All right, here we go. Three, 19. Montgomery back to the ground. And they go the wrong way here. Knocked back to the 20. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. So the myth has been shattered. Every cornerback in the league is not just a cover corner. Some of them will stick their nose in there and make plays exactly as we just saw there. A big loss suffered by the offense after that nice tackle. Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive. Here's second and 11. On second down, Montgomery. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. He'll wind up losing three. And now it's third down. Count me as a little bit surprised by what we just saw there because this has been a pretty long drive. And normally you think that wears down a defense. In this case, it looked like the offensive line let him down a little bit. Yeah, allowed the penetration and the ability to stuff him for a loss. Third and long, it's Darnold. And this is going to be incomplete. It's a great job by this secondary. When I watch them, they remind me of elite defenders on a basketball court, right? They want to contest each and every pass. Great contest on third down to bring up fourth. And Bailey able to knock it through. And the Jets hit the board first. It's 3-0. So it's third down, ball inside the red zone, and this defense looking to get the stop they need. All right, here we go. 319! 319! With Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon with you. It's the Jets in possession as we begin quarter number two here. And they're driving, but they come up on a third and short here. And he gets this down to the 18. Good enough for a first down. He needed a yard. That's what he got. And it's going to earn him a new set of downs. Well, that was big right there because they're in the bottom five in the league and converting on third down. They needed that pick up in a big way. There were two things they said they wanted to win in this game. One, the turnover battle. And the second, third down conversions. So they got one there. And they work this near the five. He'll be stopped at the six. Holding offense. So a decent gain, but Still all for first not down. on the penalty. It's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, the guys who just gave up that play. Here we go now. Blue lining. Blue lining. Following 
taking the penalty. Montgomery. Look at this. Middle of the field. A breakaway. And he's in. Touchdown, Jets. Ty Montgomery. His sixth touchdown of the season. And the Jets find a way to stretch their lead. Well, partner, that was another explosive run. And one... well, we have a red zone update. This defense stacked up here with a first and 10 inside the 15. First down, here's the run to Montgomery. They stopped after only a yard, taking it down to the 14. He did have the touchdown run earlier, but not a heck of a lot more than that throughout this game. No, not at all. In fact, I would say that this defense has done as good of a job on him as they have on any runner in recent memory. Now a first carry for the backup, Isaiah Crowell. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of two, now third down. He came out ready to play. That's three tackles for a loss, Charles. We're only in the second quarter. And that's problematic for the guys trying to run offense because that means he's got a pretty good idea of what they're doing and is actually beating them to the point of attack and making those plays. Might have to think about some misdirection or something to try and get him away from the ball. They'll get 11, but still a little short. Fourth down. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that. And keep... So this offense, they've made their way into the red zone now. They've got it a couple yards inside the 20 at the 18 first and 10. Two minutes remain here in the first half. So this offense, they've made their way into the red zone now. They've got it a couple yards inside the 20 at the 18, first and 10. They go back to the ground with McCoy. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. Exactly what they needed right there, because they needed to use the ground game to take some pressure off, because the quarterback's been struggling a little bit. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And they'll get him down just shy of the goal line at about the one. He'll get two out of that run, and it's going to bring up a second and goal. On second down, here's Allen. And this is caught for a Bills touchdown. Kelvin Benjamin hitting double digits with his 10th touchdown of the season. And the Bills have cut it to within a score. On those slants, everything happens so quickly. What makes it work? The timing between the passer and the receiver. In this case, a slant route. Ordinarily, it's probably about three steps before you go on the slant. And this... Time to jump into the action, and we have a red zone alert as this defense looks to stop a first and 10 at the 15-yard line. Darnold from the red zone now. And he's caught at the seven-yard line. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helped to have a guy who can turn it loose. And, boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. To the air again, Darnold. And it's caught. And he's going to take it in. For a Jets touchdown. Richard Rodgers in the final seconds of the first half. And the Jets are going to add on to their lead. That's one of the better examples of clock management I've seen. Whittled it all the way down just about and still put the ball in the end zone. Yeah, just a methodical drive and something really to take into the lockers here. A third down situation coming up in the third quarter in this defense, hoping to turn that third down into fourth. On third down, here's McCoy. And a penalty flagged down as he gets only about a yard. And let's listen in on the call. Holding offense. So instead...
All right, time to jump back in. This defense already two scores down. Points here would certainly make their road back a tough one. All right, here we go. And this is the 10th carry for Ty Montgomery. And he's able to get this inside the 10 now to the 9. And just what you want on a first down run. Call it 8 yards, and it's second and 2. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive, because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense gets a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. The six yards on the pickup, and it leaves him with a first and goal. Third quarter, and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. Here's Darnold. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. And here come the Bills. They're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball to their territory. Now the first play of the drive there is incomplete. We saw this a lot in the first half, and it continues. These receivers just not able to get much separation. So that means they have to win the 50-50 balls. They've got to go up with the defender and find a way to start coming down with them. And this time, contact and another incomplete pass. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. He's able to rip off 32 on that one. It's a first down. Oh, he's got it going early in this one. That's the Shady McCoy. That's vintage right there, right? Breaking tackles, creating explosive runs. And if they don't take care of this early, look out. This guy's got a big, big deck. You know where he got that nickname Shady, by the way? I know you're going to educate me on it. Help me out. Mama. Mama gave him that name when he was a youngster. And if Mama named him Shady, we're going to call him Shady. Absolutely. Over the middle complete. That's Coleman. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. Well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height, sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, doesn't it? It really does because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his drop back completed. But when you have that type of height, he can stay in. Back now in Buffalo. The Bills have the football, but they trail here as we begin quarter number four. Now they'll try again on second down. And a little floater there, but it'll wind up incomplete, falling to the ground. This drive, which was going so smoothly, all of a sudden it's a little bit of a roadblock here with two straight incompletions. Yeah, apparently this defense has had enough. Apparently they're saying... No more. We're speaking a stand right here, right now. But it is third and ten. They've got to get after him one more time. To the air. Allen. And a third down pass falls incomplete. Well, this secondary has done such a good job of frustrating these receivers tonight. Another example right there on the deep ball. Sometimes when the sun goes down and it's just the bright lights in the stadium, there's a little extra spring in their step, doesn't it? And that's what we're seeing from the defenders. Doesn't matter with his man, his son. Deep ball, short ball. That was a deep one there. They are making plays on the football, contesting everything. The time to pull out the stops is now, and they convert there on fourth down. We know it's tough enough to pick up first downs on third down plays, but when you go for it on fourth down, sometimes you're actually just praying, and on that play, the prayer was answered. The quick slant caught, and he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. Nice gain of eight that time, but it's second and goal. From the two now, second and goal. They'll give it to him up the middle, and he pushes forward but comes up short of the goal line as he'll get a yard down to about the one. A lot of tired bodies on that field, but this is a big play, third and goal. Here's McCoy, and this will result in him losing yardage. Back to the three. He lost two, and it brings up fourth. Brandon, it's easy to make decisions from right up here where we are, right in the cheap seats, but let's be Detroit, frank about this Detroit. one. This isn't even a decision as far as I'm concerned. They have to go for it here. Field goal does you almost 
is no good as time's running out in the game. If you want to win, you have to be aggressive here. They go for it on fourth and goal, but that winds up incomplete. So they really needed points here in a two-score game. Could not come away with anything there on fourth. And while we know they're a little bit discouraged here, they can't check out of this game. You and I have called a good number games over the course of our career where we've seen these types of situations teams get the it's a third down situation in the fourth quarter time to see if this defense is up to the task from the gun on third down Allen and that is Complete. One final try here for Allen. And this is intercepted. And that should do it. Picked off by the linebacker, Avery Williamson. No hesitation in this situation. Down a couple scores late in the game. This offense is staying out there on fourth. One final shot. They'll look to throw. He's going to let it fly. It's caught inside the 25. Well, Charles, the forecast called for rain throughout the entire game, and we got rain throughout the entire game. But these two teams... They had fun getting dirty out there. They love the slop. Did you trust the forecast ahead of time? Or are you I, one of those guys that's skeptical, skeptical about it? Or did you skeptical. trust it? But when I saw just a big blob of green on the radar, I said, okay, let's trust. Yeah, and that's why I'm glad you took my advice. Got your notes laminated. Because, you know, open-air booth, that rain can affect us as well, although not as much as the guys on the field. But let's face it, it's kind of fun to watch these types of games, isn't it? It is. By the way, how impressive is it that you travel with a laminator? I didn't even know there was a portable laminator. The things that you learn. Golly, wise beyond his years. So for the Jets, it's a rare victory for them as they get that record back to 3-7. and seven.
Thank you. 